strike. I'm not giving him away. Question for Pete Jr. I've got a six-year-old daughter that you could train real well if you if you'd like to train her, and and I'd love to be re related to this guy. But Pete, a lot of people have said that that you don't have uh, natural talent. Can you thumb their nose at him today? <laughs> no, I, th I think they're right in some respect. Uh, w when they say natural talent, uh, right away they're thinking uh, Roberto Clemente. Well, they're thinking that you don't have the speed. Uh, of a Tim Raines, or you don't have the, an arm of a Rocky Colavito. Uh, so a lot of people don't have that, uh, you know. But you have other things that uh, make up for a lack of talent. I have good eyes, uh, I have good hands, and my hand coordination is good. And uh, uh, Perez is the same way. I mean, uh, the only difference he's 43, I'm 44. next child after uh, <laughs> who will you name the next child after uh, is there one on the way <laughs> yes. I don't know the skill level of your son in baseball but if he didn't have the skill that you felt would make him a real successful player would you be objective enough to steer him in a different career oh I've, I I you know I don't force baseball upon my son uh, I think it's just the easiest way in the world to make a living. Uh, and he just happens to have uh, some pretty good talents, a lot more than I had when I was 15 years old. Uh, plus, he's like every other athlete today. He's going to be bigger and stronger, probably quicker. Uh, and all I can do is expose him to the world of baseball. And I think he has a, a big advantage as far as uh, being able to go to the ballpark and watching the best players in the world play every day and taking ground balls with the best players in the world. And if that rubs off on him, uh, he's got a good chance. Uh, Eduardo Perez and Victor the same way. And all you can do is expose. Uh, I'd rather him be down there taking ground balls on the answer turf than walking around on the streets at night. Pete, besides your father, who do you think has helped you the most in your 23 years? What person? Um, I mean, as far as developing baseball talents? Probably my mother. <laughs> and my uncle. My uncle was a scout for the Reds who signed me to a contract. And uh, See, that's the thing about staying in the first base. You don't want to start thanking people because you don't have enough time. You know, when you play big league baseball for 23 years, you bat 15,000 times, uh, obviously there's more than one or two people to thank. Uh, hell, I played baseball in 1960 when I got out of Western Hills High School and joined the Geneva Reds, and Tony Perez was the second baseman on that team, and he was just two months, I was two months, uh, uh, he was two months out of Cuba. That's how far back Tony Perez and I go. So we sort of watched each other grow, and we grew together. Uh, let's, let's make this official. Uh, we are pleased to uh, have at hand two of your closest friends, Pete. Here are Tony and Pachuca Perez. Would you kindly both stand? Phil, a lot of people don't realize, but uh, there's been a lot of great Latin players play the game of baseball, obviously. Uh, and Tony only needs three more home runs to be the all-time home run king for Latin ball players. All he's got to do is be able to crack the lineup. Uh, 
I think I'm not letting him play tonight because I am tired right now. Yeah. I have uh, no sleep last night. Are you thinking of taking uh, yourself out of the lineup tonight? I don't look at it like that. I'm thinking about putting Tony in the lineup. That's why I look at it. Uh, My sister Zanny Reds fan in Haley, Idaho, her name's Mary. She called me two o'clock this morning and said, give Pete my best. So it's for Mary. Idaho, huh? Pete, it broke my heart when you left Cincinnati. Did you always know you would be back? Honey, it broke my heart too. <laughs> um, no, I'll be honest with you. I, I, as long as the people who were running the ball club when I left uh, were still with the ball club, I didn't think I'd ever come back. See, I, I had never convinced myself that the fans wanted me to leave or my teammates wanted me to leave or people who worked at the ballpark <laughs> wanted me to leave. But, uh, you know, once I convinced myself that the people who run the ball club no longer wanted my services, it was very easy to leave because you don't want to work for someone if they don't like you or respect you. But I'm happy to be back now. Pete, thanks for all the memories, but there's one lady over in the crowd that we need to thank right there, Marge Schott. Marge, stand up! You know, with all the uh, talk, it's not possible to own a baseball franchise today without getting yourself interviewed good. Upside down every way. They want to know about drugs, about money, about trades, about uh, television uh, revenue and so on. This has been something. I imagine you, are, you must be a very exhausted woman, but a very happy one. Uh, Marge, are you going to make money this year? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Well, it couldn't have, uh, I, 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 I should, yes, thank you, I, I'll, I'll be happy to wear that. He must have scared you to death, Marge. You know, he, you knew you were dealing with a ball player here who was capable of, of breaking the record in, in Chicago. I mean, apparently this guy has this crazy idea of the game comes first. You must have been nuts. Fifty more years I'm going to have of this with him? <laughs> Pete, you're here to tell us that your heart was totally into trying to get a hit the last time at bat at Wrigley Field after yeah, you... Yeah, but I couldn't see a damn thing, so I wasn't worried about it. It was dark. <laughs> I couldn't even see Lee Smith. He's six foot six. Uh, but you were trying to get a hit. You would have broken this town's heart. You yeah, had I hit a ball right on the nose the fourth time up to the shortstop. If it had been two steps over... We wouldn't be sitting here today. <laughs> Listen to that. Well, I thank you for the hat. What do you think? Oh, I'm over here. Yeah. All right. Hang on. Yes. I just wanted to ask Pete how he uh, slept last night, or with the ecstasy of the feeling that you had, it was a high euphoria of trying to calm down. Well, first of all, uh, I, didn't, I didn't leave the ballpark to about quarter to two. Uh, then from the ballpark, uh, we went to the precinct to eat because I hadn't had anything to eat since uh, breakfast. So then I got home about uh, quarter to four, and I had to get up at six to do the Today and Good Morning America and CBS. And you asked me how I slept? <laughs> Like a dog named Shotzi. Hey, Mr. Donahue, you and several other people who are older seem to have great energy. How can you keep up with these younger people? How can you go and beat them and prove that you're better? It amazes me too. Uh, 
we've, we've cut down on other activities, honey. We are in Cincinnati with Pete Rose, and we'll be back in just a moment.